Hello everyone. Now I'll discuss question of neurology. So we have a five-year-old boy brought to you for a routine checkup. That and the report given to you is the child has been sleeping longer than usual and often into the afternoon on weekends. And he wake and now he wake up in the morning. He has a morning headache throughout his head. Visual equity is decrease bilaterally. Skin reveal numerous freckles in the axilla and eight flat small uniformly hyperpigmented macule on the on the trunk. This is following this a best next step in the management of this. Well, it's a lovely question. You are getting a child having freckles the answer is brain and orbital mri why this answer what the problem of the patient has patient has neurofibromatosis type 1 nf1 it is a autosomal dominant condition in fact it is, it belongs to category of the disease so called neurocutaneous syndrome now, just to add on to your knowledge, all neurocutaneous syndrome are, they are all autosomal dominant condition. Many of uh, these I'll be discussing in the, this question also. So, well, now, Caffule spot, they are the earliest manifestation. They are the macules, which may even appear in the infancy also. Skin macules, coffee color. With increasing age as the child grows, there will be exterior inguinal freckles. Freckling, what they call as. In this child also, the child has freckling. Lish nodules and neurofibromas, which are nothing but benign peripheral nerve sheet tumors, they develop. And this child also already has developed uh, neurofibroma and axillary inguinal freckling as given in the question also. Okay. Well, now as far as the skin condition are concerned, neurofibroma or cafe spot, these are also patient of NF1, they are also in the risk of developing intracranial tumors. Okay. Well, let me show you picture. What finding we can get in a patient of NF1, we can get optic glioma. We can get Lish nodule. I'll be discussing these. Caffeylate spots. Scoliosis can be there and neurofibromas. You can see lovely picture of neurofibroma and there can be pseudoarthrosis can be there. Okay. Well, they are the findings that we can see. In our patient, we are, they talked about capillary spot, neurofibroma, they talked about, and they were talking something about uh, some visual equities, the car disturb and headache is there. Let us see why it is there. So, as I, to, as I told you in the previous slide that these patients can develop intracranial tumors. There are increased risk for astrocytoma and brain stem glioma. Even in adult or hood also they can develop. So other than optic glioma, these tumor can be there. Now this patient has early morning headache and vision disturbance. Early morning headache with vomiting is one of the feature of raise intracranial pressure due to whatever reason it may be. It simply indicates raise ICP is there. It never indicates the tumor is there. There can be there are so many causes of raise ICP, but Brain tumor is one of the cause of raised ICP and this to raise ICP, the child is developing uh, early morning headache, vomiting, vision disturbance. They are the really matter that patient may be having certain intracranial mass and that also we know by physical examination we have confirmed most likely patient has NF1. So it is mandatory that we go for MRI of the brain an orbit to rule out intracranial structures or any malignancy. Now, what is the most common intracranial tumor in NF1? I did mention to you that there can be many tumors in the, in the brain, 
but which is the most common? Well, the answer is optic pathway glioma is the most common malignant tumor of NF1. Okay, in and it typically happened during toddlerhood. Like our patient, he is a patient of only child of about eight years. Well, it may be asymptomatic, but a growing tumor can cause headache and decrease visual acuity. Okay. Headache is often worse in the morning because of raised ICP, worse than uh, as overnight while supine. So as I told you, any headache or an early morning vomiting may, be, may indicate raised ICP like in this patient also. Now let's look into other options that we have. Audiometry. This bilateral acoustic neuroma, so-called vestibular schwannoma, they may cause sensory neural hearing loss. And they are diagnostic of NF2. NF2. Audiometry is the best initial screen test if you are suspecting uh, uh, any acoustic neuroma, maybe unilateral, bilateral. But definitely, uh, patient of NF2 do not have caffeinated spot and auxiliary freckling. They don't have. So this is not a case of NF2. And moreover, uh, acoustic neuroma, are, they are not the part of NF1. So there is no point in doing uh, audiometry in this case. Electroencephalogram, so-called EEG. Patient NF are, are increased risk of epilepsy because of any mass in the brain. But still, it is not the first investigation because the primary problem is of not seizure. Seizure can occur due to so many reasons. Okay, so when we are suspecting intracranial mass, the first investigation is always MRI. In fact, it is a true for any seizure patient come and you are suspecting certain mass or secondary cause is there. In any secondary cause, well, secondary cause of seizure could be any mass, it could be any electrolyte disturbance or any other reason. So always rule out secondary cause of seizure. Primary is idiopathic. So it's mandatory that you rule out secondary cause of seizure. But in this case, we already have a strong indication that we are dealing with a mass, a intracranial mass. So MRI is preferred over EEG. ESR, ethocyte sedimentary rate ESR, is an acute phase reactant, non-specific. It is raised in so many conditions. Definitely, it's, uh, it is not going to give a clue why. Uh, the patient has headache and vomiting, visual disturbance. It is not. It's a totally non-specific investigation, not needed. Lumbar puncture, we normally do to rule out any infection, especially, rather we can say even infection also, specifically we talk about meningitis. Now, patient of meningitis will have fever, headache, Photophobia, rigid neck is altogether different presentation, but these findings are not there in our case. So definitely our diagnosis is nowhere near the meningitis and definitely meningitis in particular we do uh, lumbar puncture and now if the patient has brain tumor, if you do lumbar puncture, it rather carries the risk of brain herniation. There may be raised ICP, and we in raised ICP is a contraindication of doing lumbar puncture. Okay, so of course, even in case of meningitis, also we have to uh, we have to rule out raised ICP by CT scan. Never do lumbar puncture with raised ICP. So space occupying lesion SOL should be suspecting in this patient due to morning headache and that's why meningitis is no way, lumbar puncture is not indicated in this particular case. Well, golden line to remember, the patient with neurofibromatosis 1 are at increased risk of developing optic pathway gliomas. They can present with headache and decrease visual acuity. MRI of the brain and orbit evaluate for an intra cranial mass. Okay. Thank you very much.